what is even happening anymore in Jujutsu Kaisen? Because for the last 20 weeks, it's just been absolute insanity for the community. But now, we have a chapter that just came out, with leaks that came out yesterday, that basically gives a lot more context to why Gojo just went so hard in this fight against McGill. And now seeing it, and then thinking about what we got from, like, the chapter, like, what was revealed... It's just, it's wild, man. It, it's actually just, it is just straight up freaking wild. And I'll just, I'll let this on screen here just explain itself. Like, you can pause the video, read this for yourself. It is some wild stuff. Actually, just straight up wild. So, uh, let's, let's talk about it. So, basically, the latest chapter of JJK, chapter 255, just came out earlier today unofficially. I'm not going to show screenshots of the chapter for obvious reasons. I'd rather, you know, have the video stay up. So, yeah. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that I cannot believe... Gegi hates Gojo so much to where he's now at the point to where Gojo is getting canceled. Like, straight up. Like, if, look at the right of the screen, okay? Look at the right here. You see Gojo trending. He He's trending. He is trending with 74k post. He is trending on social media right now. And the reason for it is, obviously, there's some good there. But mostly, it's about, you know, just the comments that he said literally to McGill saying that he has a very different bone structure. Don't believe me? Literally, look at this post. Like, it actually says it, and I read the unofficial chapter, and yeah, basically, Gojo does say it. So, yeah, I mean, wild. Actually, just straight up wild what Gojo says. And, once again, looking at, you know, this fight now, like, seeing what we got here, it, um... Yikes. <laughs> just straight up, yikes. So, anyways, with that being said... Let's talk about the other reason why Gojo is trending. There was this image posted earlier today that is apparently a new initial page for JJK Volume 26. This is what's going to be the initial page here for Jump Comics. And obviously this right here is Gojo. Very apparent. He looks very beat up, but his eye is opening. And someone did a cross panel comparison to the last time we saw Gojo. For instance, him, you know, being cut in half like a Kit Kat bar. And you see the page, you know, kind of pushed on his face, and it kind of looks very similar, like Gojo is waking up after, you know, being unconscious. Now, this is most likely copium to some degree. There's two ways to really look at this image, okay? It's either Gaggy saying, yeah, Gojo's coming back, which would be very surprising since Gaggy does not like Gojo. It's very apparent. But secondly, you know, I just like, will at this point in time, would Gojo even come back? Would it be a good thing? Anyways, Let's just say what this image is, okay? Personally, I'm in the box, or the, the group, so to speak, that thinks that this is Gojo's reaction before he was split in half and became a Kit Kat. Uh, that, that is my personal take on this, is that this is Gojo literally witnessing him about to be just split in half by Sukuna, and that was the end. That's it. But uh, with that being said, though, very interesting. Basically, with this dropping and then the whole stuff with, like, you know, Gojo coming out and all that, uh, you know, it basically re it gives a little bit more context to some things in the past, but also it hints that maybe Gojo might step back up into the spotlight once again. Now, let's get into the actual chapter, okay? So, chapter 255 of JJK, what did it actually do? And honestly, like... What, what, uh, what's gonna happen next? Well, let's get into that. So let's talk about the elephant in the room, and that is obviously Sukuna. Sukuna, I made a video on, a few videos on at this point, saying that, you know, he's just overwhelmingly strong. And don't get me wrong, as I've talked about, you know, a final villain being menacing is a good thing. It is. It is legit a good thing. It's, it's refreshing having a villain being menacing, and truly the hype that built him up since the very beginning is actually legitimate. He is crazy powerful, and he is wiping out people. However, the reason why there is a lot of complaints about it, it's not the fact that obviously it's getting boring because it's just the same formula, which I'll get into in a second, but it's because that Sukuna at this point, he's just so overwhelmingly powerful he shouldn't lose. It doesn't make sense. Now, once again, I'm not talking about chapter 255 yet, okay? I'm just talking about the earlier stuff from previous chapters, okay? Just giving some context here. Basically, Sukuna was just given this 
identity of he's just too powerful. You can't beat him. And, like, at this point, him winning and wiping out the whole cast seemed the most plausible way to end the story. But at the end of the day, it is a shonen. And obviously, the MC, Yuji, does need to win. That's just, that's how it is. That's just the common laws of a shonen series. Now, obviously, there could be, uh, you know, outliners to this story, but uh, I'm assuming it's going to end up where Yuji wins in the end. Now, uh, with that being said, though, we got to get into Chapter 255, which basically now came out earlier today, and it gives a little more information on where the story's going to go and if Sukuna is going to win or not. So basically, the chapter is pretty interesting on one part, and that is the fact that McGill comes in, and he basically just absolutely dodges the crap out of Sukuna's attacks. Like, he's just dancing around Sukuna's attacks, he's completely just... He, he's honestly making Sukuna look like a fool, okay? That, that's what it looks like. But um, it's st stated in the chapter that Sukuna is worn down. He is. His hands are messed up. There is context to, like, a binding valve, why he can't use, like, the slice that got rid of Gojo. All these different type of things. His reverse curse technique and all of that. You know, the chapter basically implies that Sukuna really is at the end of his ropes. It is a complete 180, so to speak, the, from the other chapters we got of us recently where it's like a character comes in you know is hyped up briefly and then Sukuna wipes them out in one chapter and then you know Sukuna you know is introduced to another character and then you know they're hyped up and then they're wiped out again and this has kind of been the formula for about 20 weeks now and this is one of the big complaints a lot of people have had is that it's just it's following that same loop of just Sukuna you know going up against someone wipes them out and then uh, going up against another person wipes them out it's just like okay it, it, it's kind of dull at that point but um with pushing that aside, the point of the matter is, is that Sukuna was stated within chapter 255 to legitimately be getting worn out. He is tired. And one of the big reasons for this is Gojo, which, once again, this is one of the big complaints I had with the latest chapters, and I talked on as being blunt, is that it makes no sense other characters wearing Sukuna out when Gojo should have been the one that truly wore him out completely. And the way the chapters are being, you know, given context, it seemed like just Sukuna wasn't. He was just getting stronger and stronger and just not even trying I mean at this point he's still technically isn't fully trying let's just be blunt here but uh he gets a black flash okay let's just let's get right into that one he black flashes um nipple guy I, I don't know his name, but basically he gets black flashed at the end of the chapter, and the chapter implies that Gojo, when he had a second black flash, it, you know, rev uh, revived his reverse curse technique. And then it says, what would it do for Sukuna? And obviously, at this point in time, it's implied that Sukuna is way beyond Gojo's capabilities, like way beyond him in every shape and form. And so because of that, if Gojo got his reverse curse technique for hitting a second black flash, what's that going to do to someone like Sukuna? How much is he going to gain, so to speak? And so, yeah, the, the chapter ends off where it's like, it tried to make it seem like Sukuna was at the end of his ropes, but then he gets a power boost at the end, and so it falls into the exact same formula that has been going on for many, many weeks now, where Sukuna gets glazed once again. And once again, I don't hate the fact Sukuna is strong. I, I, I want to make sure that is clarified. I see nothing wrong with him be being menacing. I just think that, you know, drawing it out at this point is just like, why? He's going to win, you know, and so just let him win at this point. Anyways, all I'm going to say is, is that the latest chapter is pretty cool because um, I like seeing McGill just absolutely come back into the story, kind of doing his moves and work around Sukuna, and Sukuna literally just kind of taking an L, like he couldn't actually hit the man, but uh, I also like the fact that Yuji came back in, Chozo came back in, and we just had them really working back together, I mean, even Maki, and uh, yeah, that, let's talk about that one. Maki got back up. She got back up, and that one honestly impresses me more than anything. Out of any feat I think I have seen in the last 20 to 30 chapters of JJK, that is probably the most astounding feat, if we're not counting the glazing of Sukuna. And why do I say that? Well, Maki took a black flash to the freaking chest, and Gagi wanted to cement it that, you know, it was a multi-three POV shot on a single manga panel of her getting it hit by that black flash. It showcased the impact, the power behind it was not weak by any means. And the fact that Maki got back up from that, 
is absolutely an insane durability feat that honestly, I think not even Gojo would be able to get up from. Like, he would thanks to reverse curse technique. But if it was a straight up brawl without reverse curse technique, Gojo would die. Like, straight up. No, I don't think anyone that we have seen in this story is as durable as what we saw from Maki because she has heavenly restriction. It's just, it's absolutely wild. Now, with that being said about her durability, I think that um, it really makes me happy that she did get back up and she didn't just get one shot like that, but it's like, you know, she's obviously injured. There's no way she's going to continue to keep fighting. I mean, she she's definitely, you know, gonna probably break down sooner or later. Even if she has survived it, she's heavily injured. There's no way she doesn't have a lot of broken bones within her own body after taking a full blunt hit from a black flash from Sukuna. And then now Sukuna does another black flash, it's like, nah, like, if he gets his hands on her, it's completely over. But, um, yeah, overall, if we're going to get into the nitty gritty of it, you know, Gojo's canceled, um, McGill is awesome, Maki has survived, Sukuna gets glazed once again with a second black flash, and it looks like, once again, Sukuna is probably going to win this. But I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching. May all of you have a fantastic day or night wherever you live. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe. It does help me out a lot, and I would greatly appreciate it. And with that, Chibi out.